This tutorial is going to show you how to add a storage cabinet in your map. You'll be able to put ammo or health or whatever you want inside the cabinet and it'll be accessible with a three digit code. Just like you've seen in the first in the uh, single player game. So I'm going to start by opening up a test map I have. It's called Test Map 2. Test 2. And it's just a single room, basic texturing, just a spawn point for the player and a light. And now let's start by adding our cabinet. It is an environmental storage cabinet. So I right click to get my entity list and I scroll down to choose my environmental storage cabinet. There it is. You'll see this big block here show up. Now in order for me to see what this looks like I can hit N to bring out the entity editor and I can turn on the animation by entering a key of anim and a value of open. There we go. Now you can see right here it looks like a storage cabinet but it's facing the wrong way. So I can change the angle that it is facing. So you see if I hit 270 it'll face down. If I hit 180 it'll be facing the way I need it to face in my map. I'm going to position it right and I'm going to give this cabinet a name. Let's enter a key of name and let's enter a value of locker1. One. Locker1 one is a very good basic name. It's important that we have names that we can follow. Now let's enter let, now let's add the interface, the push button GUI interface for the player. And I'm going to add it on the protruding part right here on that cabinet, just like you see in the game. I'm going to hit 1 on the keyboard to reduce my grid size to only one unit. And I'm going to need a texture. So let's go to Media, Textures, Common. In the Common Textures, we want a Common Texture No Draw, because most of this I don't want to have drawing anything. So I select no draw, and I can begin drawing my object. Let me switch over to textures to speed this thing up. I hit control tab to change my view so that I can size and position this correctly. In the front, there we go. Now the face of this, let me move in a little bit, my arrow keys. The face, I want to have a different texture. So let's go over to media and let's load up. Entity GUI. It's common entity GUI texture. There we go. And what you see is that the texture looks like it's too large for this block. It's important that we resize this texture properly because the size of the texture is going to determine the size of that interface that we're pushing our buttons on. And if it's too big, the interface won't look like it fits properly. So make sure I still have that selected. The control shift select for just that one face. And if I hit S for the surface inspector, it's your texture editor. I want to go over to here to fit the texture. I want to fit it one texture width wide, one texture width height. If I fit, you'll see it fits. It scaled the texture properly for me. Next I need to turn this into something that the player can interact with. In this case, I want to select the entire brush. I want to right click on it and turn it into a function static. And then I can hit N to bring up this entity editor. Let me get a little more of a view. And I can turn this into, I can, I can adjust the GUI, the interface that he's working with, by pressing this GUI button down here. It'll bring up a little dialog box and a list of all the available GUIs. I want a control panel, and I want one for the cabinet. When I select it, you'll see a little visual representation of it show up. So over here on this GUI interface, we have the ID. We have the name that'll show up in here. It's I'm point, pointing all these out because we're going to be defining what those numbers and knows what the name is and then the three digit code can be typed in right here. I'll click OK and then now I want to target this to the cabinet so that whenever we interact with it it affects the cabinet. So I'll type into the key, I'll type in target and the value is going to be locker1. Hit enter to set it and there we go. You can see a little arrow representation. Let me get a top view for you. You see this arrow going from origin point to origin point. That means I've targeted this to this. That's important because we want to make sure we're targeting the right thing and make sure we're targeting something. Now we can continue with adding the parameters here. We, what we want to do is we want to add the parameters. There's five parameters we can add to the interface. The first three are the three digits for the code to unlock the door. The fifth one is the ID that shows up in the up upper right hand corner. The fourth one, 
I know I kind of did that backwards order. The fourth one is the name that shows up. Let's enter these items in. So in here I'm going to type in the key. I am going to type in GUI, G-U-I underscore P-I-R-M, PARM, the GUI PARM 1. And we'll make this a simple combination code. We'll make it 1, 2, 3. No one will be able to guess that, right? <laughs> okay, PARM 2 is going to be 2. PARM 3 is going to be 3. Now, PARM 4 is the name I said. So we'll call this FOIL. And PARM 5 is going to be the ID. We'll say like a 567. Just something to get you going. Let's make sure all those numbers took. I'll scroll through this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. Now we have one more step to make this uh, our basic functional cabinet. I'm going to escape, make sure everything's deselected. I want to go over to our media, and I'm going to select a clip plus movables common texture. Right now, the model is set up that. Oh, let's. Uh, there we go. The model is set up that the players can walk th right through them. There is no clip status. Uh, they're, it's like they're not even there. And we don't want the player to be able to walk through the cabinet. They w we want it to have some sort of physical structure. So I'm going to hit 2 on the keyboard because I don't need these tiny brushes. And I already have my texture selected, I hope, for, for the plus. Okay. And I'm going to draw out my texture, my, my, uh, my brush here, to fit around the cabinet. So it's sort of like I'm making a cabinet inside the cabinet. You can see I'm fitting it on the outside. Now I'll go to the other side. I'll hit spacebar to copy it. It could be inside. It doesn't matter. You see right here I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to stretch it inside where the where we know no player needs to be going. Nothing is being stored in that area behind the uh, interface. It won't affect anything because it won't be seen. I'll hit spacebar again and I'll shape this for the top. And later on we're going to do the door. So right now the player can walk through the door. I want to get to that in a moment because we got to do some fancy stuff with that. So I'll hit escape. I'll save the map that we have so far and run it so that you can see where we are. Hit F2 to bring up the game. All right, I'm going to drag that over into our window here. And I hit the TLD key to bring down the console and I'm going to type in dev map to run our map. It's in the map is located in game MP. It's called test two. Here we are in the simple room. There's our cabinet. Now you can see I'm not going to be able to walk through the side. All right, I'm stuck. It's like it's a solid object. I can walk through the door, and that was the problem I was talking about before. But more importantly, I can interact with the uh, the face. Here's our five six seven locker ID. Here's the name I told you about I put in foil. Now our locker combination is hopefully one, two, three. There we go. It opened. All right, now let's put something in the cabinet. I'm going to exit out of this window. There we go. Before I put something in the cabinet, I, uh, let's get that door open. I can actually open the door from here. I'm going to go into the entity editor after I select this entity. You see I've got the storage cabinet selected. And I'm going to type in the frame that the animation will be displayed. Right, uh, Frames 1 through 500 show the door opening. And anything after 500, I'll type in 500, will be with the door open. So you can type in anything after 500. Enter that and you can see, boom, the door opened. Excellent. Okay, We'll escape out of that. Now let's put in some items. I want to get a top view here. Let's put in some ammo. How about that? I'll go over to right click. I'll go to ammo. Let's put in some large cells. It's a little too big that way, so I'll change the angle. There we go. Put that right in there. Let's get a front view so I can drag that down to the floor of the cabinet. I'll now I'm going to take note of what the name of this cat of this uh this this ammo is because I'm going to need this name later. 
So I'd suggest you write down, this is ammo cells large one. You could rename it, but in this case, the name that it has right now is good enough for me. I'm going to escape. I'm going to add another entity. How about we add um, some an item med kit, some health. I'll properly position that. Again, take down the name. It is item med kit one in this case. We're going to need to know that information. And now another thing that we're going to need to do is what we're going to is whenever we open the cabinet. Before we open the cabinet, these items inside the cabinet should not be active. They don't need to be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both and I'm going to give them both the same parameter in here. I'm going to set the key to trigger first, meaning that these items have to be triggered before they're active. I'm going to give it a value of 1. There we go. Now since they were both selected, they both they were both given the same key and value. So be careful that nothing else was selected, otherwise you can you can accidentally rename things. I'll hit escape because we're done with those for now. Next thing we want to do is we want to add a trigger relay. So I'm going to right click on the grid here and pull up a trigger relay target. Trigger relay. This will relay trigger information. What we're going to do is we're going to target this, our GUI here, to the trigger relay. And the relay can tar uh, trigger a whole bunch of different items. In this case, it's going to be our door, it's going to be our, our uh, the items that we put in it. So let me position this someplace. Um, I like to keep everything uh, together so that it's less confusing whenever I'm um, wandering around the map and this map is full of objects. We're going to need to give this a name. So I'm going to give it a name of a uh, locker one relay. That's good. And I'm going to need to target these two items down here. Now I told you to write down the names. Hopefully you did. And I'm going to target is the key and the value is going to be one of the uh, items. Let's say the ammo cells. We'll target the uh, ammo cells large one. There we go, we got our blue line. Our blue line showed up right down here saying that we did target it correctly. Now let's put another target in, target two. And uh, in this case I'm going to do the item med kit. Item. Med kit one. Is that right? That was right. There we go. There's the blue line going down there. Okay, we don't need that anymore, so we're going to deselect our, our trigger relay and we're going to target the trigger relay from uh, the function static, the GUI interface that we have. So if we scroll down, we only have our target once, just the targeting the locker. So we can do a, tar a second target. Target 2 is the key, and the value is going to be locker 1 relay. Oh. Make sure you spell everything correctly. <laughs> and there's our blue line going to our target, ray, target, target relay, just like we needed. We're getting very close to the finish of this. Let's escape out of everything. Um, we can now close the door on our cabinet. So I'll go in here and I'll look for where we entered the uh, the anim uh, the uh, the frame 500. I'll select that. Now there's a little X right over here next to the value. If I click that, it'll delete the key. There's the closed door. I can escape off of that. So it's nothing selected. Now we're going to add we're going to add the door. Right now, as I showed you before, the player can walk right through the front of it. And we don't want that. We don't want the player to see what's inside the cabinet ahead of time. So we're going to create a door for it. I want to use this same texture, the texture Clip Plus. And let's get a view that I can actually see where I am drawing. Here we go. And I'm going to fill up the whole cabinet area. It could just be the front, but I'm going to cover all my bases by making sure I have everything select everything filled in here. There we go. Now I want to turn that into a function static so that we can control it. I right click the brush, go to function static, and we need to give that a name. I'm going to call it name, I'm going to call it locker1 door. There we go. And I can escape. Now we have our door set up in there. Now here's the uh, Here's the entity that makes the door disappear. I'm going to right click, I'm going to go over to function remove. Function remove will remove whatever it's targeting from the map. There we 
we go. Oh, I'm going to position it so that everything's uh, lined up nice and neat. <laughs> and now I want to target the door. So I'm in the entity editor. I'm going to target locker one door. See our blue line show up? There it is. Now we need to give this a name so that we can target the function remove. So we'll name it uh, locker remove. And now let's target it with our target relay. So I'll escape, I'll select our, I'm sorry, our trigger relay. And let's see what targets we have in there so we don't overwrite one. We have two targets, so I'm going to give this a target three. Locker one remove. There we go, selected. And that's it. We're done. Let's save what we've got. Let's compile the map with BSP. F2. Bring down the console. Dev map. And let's see if this puppy runs. Okay, there's our cabinet. I should not be able to run through it. I can't. It's solid. Solid on all sides. Looks great. Everything looks the way it did before. Now let's see our if our key combination works. Oh, let's move in. I'm going to type in one, two, three. The door opens and there's our items. Now can we get the items? Absolutely. That's how you add the cabinet. Excellent. Happy mapping.